$15 with the limited edition box cover for $20. It is available on the Fridge Press. Put your hands together for the talented Mr. Chris August. that are about to come out of my face. That's what words look like coming out of my face. <laughs> are words that I say out of love. I say them because they're important. I say them because you need to remember this shit. Ready? Here goes. You are not special. <laughs> it's true and you should be glad because people who are special are usually fucking insufferable. And the only people more insufferable than people who are special are people who think they are special. And I know that this flies in the face of all that lovey shit your mama's taught you growing up. Oh, baby. <laughs> you so special. Ain't nobody else like you. And this would be fine if we knew how to handle that. But we, as it turns out, are human beings and not very good at knowing when to stop. So I'm special usually turns into I'm Special. Give me shit for free. <laughs> I'm special. I should get to park real, real close to whatever the fuck I want. I'm special. I'm gonna make substitutions, even when the lot sign at the restaurant clearly states, thank you for not making substitutions, dick bag. <laughs> there is a nearly non-existent line that separates special from entitled. And the average American is pretty sure he is special enough to piss all the fuck over that line so we become drenched in urine-soaked entitlement. And I got issues with this. Because entitlement, that sweet, steadfast, misguided notion that anybody owes us anything is what keeps us lazy. Keeps us convinced that we are above genuine work, honest effort, and the desire to earn anything. So. My prayer, slash blessing, slash wish, slash dream, slash curse, is this. At every second of your life, while you are arguing your way out of a ticket that you got for clearly breaking the law, while you are certain that you should not have to take a class that is required for everybody the fuck else, while you know that you do not have to turn off your cell phone during a movie or poetry reading, or funeral, that at every second, somewhere in the back of your entitled little brain, there repeats the incessant mantra, I am not special, I am not special, I am not special, I am not special, because you wait! And I know! Because <laughs> five days a week, I work at a high school for students whose needs are, by law, defined as special. And not because their mamas told them so. And not because they think I owe them anything, but because life dealt them shit that they will never be able to control and they can't change that. So, if you desperately need to consider yourself special, then you better be ready to be stared at daily. Better be ready to be fed through a tube. You better be ready to wear a helmet, even when your ass ain't rollerblading. You better be ready to travel to sub-Saharan Africa, the gutters of Calcutta, and cardboard boxes home to veterans in America, look their inhabitants directly in the face and tell them exactly why anybody owes you anything. Or you better be ready to work for what you want, shut up and be goddamn glad you can, cause special is fine, y'all, but worthy is better. So inspired words, say it with me. I am not special like you mean it. I am not special. One more time, y'all. I, I am not, not special. special. Go ahead now, go earn something. A degree, a parking space, or your mama's love. Cause you are not special, y'all, but your accomplishments will be. I feel like we are a small enough crowd, and I like to move, so, uh, so fuck the mic. Inspired Birth, thank you all so much for sticking around, for staying. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, especially uh, because, as, as the poem indicated, until five days ago, uh, I was a special educator. Um, I taught at the school where I just was for nine years, and um, as of this week, have left that to do this full time. So uh, this wow. is actually... Y'all are my first show as I begin touring the country. Uh, so yeah, so welcome. Welcome to my life. Uh, Quick question, where did you teach special education? Because I just got accepted as a special education teacher for next year. And I'm oh, uh, in Baltimore, in Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, yes. or in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, where, where in Atlanta? 
I'm not even sure right now. Okay. No one told me it's that. This is an Atlanta program. For I asked because the school where I used to work, uh, Kennedy Krieger High School, is nationally known, and there is an affiliate in Atlanta. So. Urban Just teaching residency. That's right. Work. <laughs> I'm kind of upset that Mr. Shine is gone because um, I have a poem that I was really planning on corrupting his whole life with. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I was going to apologize to Mama Shine, who's clearly there and all. Okay. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so, as as a recovering special educator, I'm going I'm to ask, ask for a show of hands all the fucking time. It's going to be really obnoxious. So, by show of hands, um, who are my cussers who loves to fucking cuss? <laughs> like, I'm talking like when you were little, you and your siblings and cousins shit would make up like cuss chants and shit, 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 son of a bitch, bastard ass bitch, yeah, so on and so Yeah. Alright, so this is for y'all. Everyone else, you can just close your tender virginal ears. It'll be fine. Give me three minutes. In fixing! That's what it was, that's how I knew. It was not his hair, dyed green spikes held up with model airplane glue, like all the punks have, or his lack of eye contact and apathetic apathetic posture, a prerequisite among disaffected youth worldwide. No! I knew when he opened his mouth. It's for fucking ridiculous, man. <laughs> In fixing! The same thing tipped me off to his friend seated across the coffee shop table from him. Her calves crossed the tops of her combat boots as she exhaled a puff of stylish smoke and ennui. Wow. Ooh. fucking exactly. Mm -hmm. The whole thing's a goddamn sir. <laughs> in fixing! It didn't matter what they were saying or what they thought it represented, there was something bigger than their words encoded in the way they were saying them. In fixing. Most of us learn in elementary school that a prefix goes to the beginning of a word, a suffix goes to the end of a word. These are indisputable, irrefutable locations in a word, but when we want to add things, usually cusses, to the middles of words, we rely on something less concrete. There's no one spot that works as the middle for every word, yet still, we say, into fucking disputable. And it's ira cuck suck and feudable, and it is every time, and it all comes down to linguistics. Ling motherfucking linguistics. Oh, you wouldn't know you were doing it, y'all, and you certainly wouldn't be aware of why, but when you put a word, an infix, inside another word in your head, you are breaking that word into syllables, and so is everybody the fuck else. In in 12th grade, my English teacher taught us that in order to determine the stress syllable in a word, you call that word to dinner. Stretch its name out, good and long. Disputable. And whatever you hold out the longest, that is the stress syllable. When we put an infix in a word, we put it in front of the stress syllable. All of us, all of the time, in Nicaragua, a language called Owa infixes pronouns into its verbs always in front of the stress syllable, so it works regardless of geography. The dude who invented Klingon does his the exact same way, so clearly it works regardless of amount of friends or personal hygiene. Infixing knows no political affiliation, y'all. You will cuss the exact same way whether you are I'm a douchebag critic or an evil bastard publican. <laughs> Infixing knows no religion. If a Catholic school nun were to cuss you out, she would call you an Obama fucking nation of the ten colic my pious ass amendments. After which she would hightail to the nearest con fucking professional and say ten hell goddamn Marys and what this means. Is it at the kitchen door of our collective unconsciousness there is one lexiconic mother calling her children home and it is always dinner time? Within the very same words we use to separate each other, we are reminded that we're connected. So, if I returned to that coffee shop table and complimented that punk on his hair, he and I would be going through the exact same process as I call him mis mis fucking guided and he called me self goddamn righteous and it means that we're united. If we were Japanese, we'd say uni fucking tato. If we were German, we'd say fair fucking gleicht. If we were deaf, we'd say... <laughs> now, however we choose to say it, y'all, infixing is yet another reminder that underneath it all, we are you fucking knighted. This should be a letter to the 23 cops who have pulled my ass over in the past two years alone. 11 of whom have asked to search my car with nothing more to go on the busted taillight he stopped me for in the first place. It should be angry and eloquent and ask questions, but 95 degrees on the side of this back road for the past hour has juiced the poetry out of me, y'all. My eloquence and idealism are dripping down my temples and stinging the sides of my eyes, and I... Blame Officer Lowell. 
Officer Lowell spent a mile of this back road simultaneously tailing me and punching my plate number to yeah. the finest piece of computer machinery this backwoods county could afford him because Officer Lowell, yeah. like all of them, has been trained to perform an equation that combines my beatdown car with my appearance and always yields the answer of drug dealer. Yeah. 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 And now! Now, an hour later, we have reached an impasse because I have informed Officer Lowell that no, unless he can tell me why, he is not searching my car. And now, y'all, the two cops he has called in for backup are circling it like they are the participants what? in a scavenger hunt that features contents of an 89 Oldsmobile at the top of the list. And Officer Lowell is about ready to win this shit because that fine piece of computer machinery, y'all, just revealed that two years ago, I had a lapse in my registration, and now, 39 unpaid dollars later, that is enough to suspend my ass. That is enough for the car to be towed, and that is enough for him to search it without my permission. And before he does, he offers me one last chance. What? You sure there's nothing in this car I need to know about? Yo, I have a rehearsed speech for these situations. It goes something to the tune of, gee, Officer Phil in the blank, as a teacher of students with special needs, I think it'd be real fucking stupid for me to do anything I didn't want my kids emulating, so no. Aside from the name badge from the school where I work, you won't find shit in this car that you need to know about. But I have already determined that Officer Lowell is not even worthy of this speech. So instead, I tell him how sad it is that he shows so little trust for the very people he is supposed to be protecting. And Officer Lowell tells me he doesn't trust anyone. So half an hour of searching yields nothing. Except for a change in Officer Lowell, and I don't know what it is. When he returns, he tells his backup they can go. He's comfortable waiting for the tow truck with me alone. I have never seen a cop do this before, not even sure they are allowed to. When they leave, he calls me to the side of his patrol car, leaning in through the open passenger window. His air conditioning is the first relief I have known in two hours. Mm. There's been something on Officer Lowell's mind ever since he saw my name badge, dangling from my rear view like a memory or a nagging voice. He tells me, that school where you work, had a son almost went there. He died before we could send him and I'm frozen in the cold of his car. I tell him I'm sorry. He tells me it's all right. He tells me how to get my car back, the impound lot, the DMV, offers me a ride if I need one, says he's going that way anyway, and I want to tell him I'm sorry. I'm sorry you and I look different. I'm sorry your son is never coming back. I'm sorry the world is so profoundly fucked up. It took both of us two hours to start caring about each other at all. I'm sorry we all bear the burdens of appearance teacher in unkempt hair and beard, grieving father suffocating inside the blue and the badge of his job, but, but those words don't belong in this conversation. So leaning one last time into the cool kiss of his car, I look into Officer Lowell's eyes, human and blue, and simply tell him, thank you for trusting me. Mm. Wow.